Hello everyone, Chrissy here again at A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. As a fun spin-off off of my last video where I shared invitations or provocations to learn language arts inspired, today's video is all about math. The first math setup today is all about time. Now to be clear, this is not a new idea or concept to Bella and Noah, but they do need more practice reading an analog clock and to master the time terms like quarter past and half till. And what better way to understand an analog clock than to make one? So I set out our art table and on it all the supplies needed for this project. I drew the clock template on 140 pound watercolor paper. I filled our watercolor jars with water ready for pigment and our watercolor pigments are by Windsor & Newton. Paint brushes and sea sponges to damp our paper for wet on wet painting. The process is the heart of this art practice so we make sure not to skip or rush past the mixing of pigments and damping the paper for wet on wet painting. While we wait on our projects to dry, we're going to explore a few more materials on time. Telling Time written by Jules Ol Older. Written by Jules Older. This is an introduction to measurements of time. The author does a good job of covering the broad concept of time, like how long things take and when things happen. There is an introduction to calendars and units of times from seconds to millennia. There is even a spread on reading Roman numerals and a poem or rhyme to help memorize things like there are seven days in a week, a month is four weeks, 60 seconds in a minute, and more. The text and illustrations are engaging. There are like little quizzes or questions and so we're going to use our little model clock to explore this resource some more. With every new month, I take turns with each of the younger children to reset the calendar. But first, we always read through the new month's poem in Around the Year by Elsa Besco. We love this little title. There are poems to remember how many days are in a month, the month in a year, hours, days of the week, along with a poem for each month. Then we move on to our wooden calendar by Treasures by Jennifer. We read the months together, we talk about the season and the weather, and then adding the order of the days uh, and the numbers helps to solidify counting skills and number recognition for Luna. 
And next up for Luna is a super simple numeracy activity using wooden rings we have as loose parts, some blocks, number blocks, and beans. Luna's numeracy loose parts imitation inspired one for my Noah. So similar materials but with a bit of modification as he practices part part whole reasoning. So for this spread I laid out numbered rocks, twigs or sticks, wooden rings or wooden rounds, beans and blank squares of paper for labeling. If you watch our videos regularly, you know we love games for learning and math is no exception to that. So I set out two math games in the living room so that we can use as our opening activities today. Addition Bingo, we thrifted this several years ago. A card game we enjoy for numeracy and logic is Go Fish. This helps my Luna girl identify numbers as she's looking to match the same card to a match of four. It's also a good way to practice multiples of four. And one more loose parts invitation. This one is for my Bella and its purpose is to review symmetry inspired by butterflies. I brought down several butterfly books and reference resources to first point out and to discuss symmetry in butterflies and also to draw some inspiration from. Then I laid out a tray of natural loose parts like pine cones, seashells, wood pieces, rings, walnut shells, sticks, olive leaves, and beans. My Bella thrives in learning that requires creativity. She had a blast with this open-ended invitation and in creating symmetrical winged beauties. So a quick note before I go today, I often get asked is this type of learning actually sustainable? How long does it take to set up this type of learning? In short, nothing about this is open and go, and yes, it does require time and planning. Opened and go is easier and quicker. Worksheets have a time and place, and we own those resources as well. But let's be honest, they're one dimensional. And that's not the education that I want to give my children because my children are not one dimensional. They're not all the same. And that's also not the type of learning where we find the true goodness of learning. We find it in the thought provoking, engaging and exploration where we have questions, discussions, where we spark interest, creativity and new ideas. Mm -hmm.